All right, what we're working with today is section 10.1's lines and segments that intersect circles. So you should have already watched the vocabulary video from section 10.1, but just in case we need to go over some of these. Um, a big one is a chord. A chord is a, se a, um, ah. a chord is a segment that goes from one side of the circle to another side. It touches the circle at two places. It does not have to go in between the center, go in the center. Um, concentric circles, remember you have the same center and then there's a bunch of circles on the outside so it kind of looks like a target. Diameter is a chord that goes through the center. Radius is a point from the center out. A secant is when you have a line that goes through a circle and touches it twice. So a secant and chord look the same. A chord is over here on the left. It doesn't have arrows. A secant keeps going. A tangent is a line that touches a circle at one point, and I kind of missed it. But if it touched it, it's right there, and that is what the point of tangency is. And so tangent means to touch it once. And tangent circles are when you have two circles that touch once. It's kind of hard to draw them, but that's the idea. Okay. So reviewing that vocabulary, going over that, see if you can answer these first five questions um, based off this big circle problem on the right. Once you think you have it, go ahead and press play. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you got some of them. So A to E is right here, and that is a radius. It goes from the center out. CI, now if you notice CI, it does not have arrows above it, so that means it goes from C to I and it stops. It does not keep going. And so since it stops and does not keep going through, that is a chord. B to G, it starts and stops again. You don't see any arrows up here, so it's a chord. But the best definition for it is actually a diameter because it is a chord they goes to the center of a circle. Okay, I'm going to clear up my picture some. There we go. Now we can talk about it some more. Okay, so now let's look at um, the next one, FE. If you notice, FE has arrows above, so it's this whole thing. I don't have arrows on my picture because somehow they got cut off, but it's that whole thing. And if you notice, it only touches once at this point E, so this is a tangent. And if I asked you what the point of tangency is, you should be able to say that it's E because that's where it touches at once. Okay, and then the last one, A to G. Well, this is a strange one, but if you notice, it has arrows, so that means it's going to keep going. So A to G is just here, but because it has arrows, it keeps going all the way. So because it's a line that goes through and doesn't stop, that is a secant. Okay, so those are basic vocabulary words, and you'll have to be able to identify those a lot. Okay, so now we have some rules to learn. Oops, hold on. The first learn rule we have is that tangents, so this is a tangent down here, tangents are perpendicular to the radius, and it's the radius that goes to that point of tangency. So whenever you have a tangent and a radius, it's perpendicular, which means it's a right angle. The thing that you're going to use most right there is you're going to have to use a lot of Pythagorean theorem. So be ready for that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Even though we're on circles, you're still going to use a lot of right triangle information. Okay, the next one, if you have two tangents, so here's a tangent on top, here's a tangent on top, bottom, and it goes to the same exterior point, then these two tangents are congruent. Um, it's kind of like a clown hat. If I turned it sideways, it, it would stand up and it'd be a clown hat. So if you have two tangents to the same point, those two sides are congruent. And then what will happen eventually is that, also look, tangents are congruent to radiuses. So they might draw this and draw this, and then you have congruent triangles, okay? So those are some things that you might need to see. 
But again, right now you just need to know that if you have two tangents that go to the same point out here, then they are congruent. So let's look at some problems based on this information. So determine if it's tangent. If it is a tangent, then you should be able to get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, it's a right angle where it touches the point of tangency. So that's 5 squared plus 12 squared. Now here's the issue. I don't know the whole hypotenuse. I know that this part is 9, but I don't know this part. Do you recognize what that part has to be? Well, that part is a radius. So if this radius is 5, that means this radius is 5. So then my whole hypotenuse is 14. And so now, if it is a tangent, these two things will be equal. So let's figure this out. So it's 25 plus 144. And 14 squared, I believe, is 196. I always forget some of my bigger ones. And so 125, I'm sorry, 25 plus 144 is only 169. And these are not equal, so it's not tangent. Okay. I need to check my view. My view got small. Okay, so because it was not a right triangle, then that means that AB is not a tangent. Okay, so now let's look at this next one. Let's figure out the length of the radius. Well, it's tangent so it should be a right angle so r squared plus my other leg squared has to equal 23 squared okay now that it's set up see if you can solve it and press play when you get it okay so you should have got r squared plus 225 is equal to 529 you're going to minus 225 on both sides, and you get r squared is 304. And so I would take the square root. Oops, I didn't mean to write it there. Let's turn my calculator. I don't have my graphing calculator today. I'm just using my phone, so it takes a little longer. So the square root of 304 is 17.4. Okay. So the radius is 17.4. So this picture definitely does not look like it's drawn to scale. Did I just make a mistake? Let me double check that. Something seems wrong around that. 23 squared is 529 minus 225 square root of, oops, square root of 304. Yeah, 17.4. Just my picture's not drawn to scale. A lot of times pictures aren't drawn to scale. We just use them as a reference. Okay zooming out. So now let's look at the next one. Okay, so now where are you going? Hold on. Sorry guys. Alright, so now we need to set a problem for this. I don't want to control that. So here's my right angle. My two legs are r squared and 19 squared. And then my hypotenuse is this whole thing. It would be nice if it was its variable by itself, but it's not because it has to be 13 and r. So I need to do this. I'm going to do r plus 13 squared. So this is r squared plus 361. And then now what we need to do is we need to figure out r, this thing right here. Let me make my box bigger. We need to figure out what this is. Remember when I have this, it's the same thing twice. And so now I'm going to distribute r times r is r squared. r times 13 is 13r. And then now I'm going to change color so you can see it. Now I'm going to go to the next one. 13 times r is 13r. And 13 times 13 is 169. So when I combine my middle two terms, I get r squared plus 26r plus 169. You can't just do r squared plus 169. You have to have that middle term. So now I have r squared 
plus 26R plus 169. You will not have a ton of problems like this, but you need to be familiar that if you have um, a, a square of a sum, you have to actually FOIL or distribute them out. Okay, so now if I minus R squared on both sides, that actually makes the problem a lot easier because the R's are gone. So now I have 26R plus 169 is equal to 361. And now you have a problem you know how to do. So when I subtract 361 minus 169, I get 192. So R squared is 192. And to get rid of a square, you're going to go ahead and square root it. So the square root of 192 is 13.86. So it is a little harder because you have this. But eventually, usually what will happen is your R squares will cancel off. Okay, so let's see. We got two more problems. So these are more of our clown hat ones because I have tangents that go to one point. So remember, if I have a clown hat, they're the same. So I can just set these two things equal to each other. So I minus x on both sides, and so I get x minus 3 is 15. And you're going to add 3 to both sides, so x is 18. Okay? So this one, I do have clown hats because I have this and this. But that just tells me that x is here. That doesn't tell me what x is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this other rule where I have my right angle right here. And 18, or 12 is my hypotenuse. So it'll be 8 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. So now I'm going to solve that. 64 plus x squared is 144. And then 144 minus 64 is 80. And then I just take the square root of both sides. And so now the square root of 80 is like 8.9. So again, picture isn't drawn to scale, it uses a reference, but if this top is 8.9, this bottom x is also 8.9 because of the clown hat rule. Okay, so now you have to look at your different things, be ready to look for right triangles and solving for Pythagorean theorem, and make sure that you get your vocabulary straight up here. Uh, it's going to be important to know those vocabulary for the rest of the chapter, so make sure you learn them today.